Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a little card game called The Inheritors. Although a little might be a strong word because this box is packed with cards and they scatter all over the table. It's a two to four player game, takes about half an hour to play, and I gotta say, you know, there's a lot of games I go into, I'm like, oh, I wonder what this will be like. I had nothing about this one. I thought the name was kind of boring, Inheritors, and this game, Inheritors, the king has died and you're trying to inherit the throne or whatever. But, and it's all animals which is the thing these days. Make your game with anthropomorphic animals. But I really didn't know much more about it, but it's kind of collecting sets of cards. And you know what? It's kind of hard to explain this game in a short way. I'll do it kind of just by showing you how it works. So this setup's gonna be a little bit different. There's gonna be a certain number of these cards out based on the number of players. You're also going to have a faction for each color. So each color comes with two different factions that you can play. I'm showing you one of them, but instead of the fox, you can play the monkey, and you have the lizard, and the moose, and the eagle, and the wolf. So each of these are different, but you'll place all of this out there. There's also a draw pile, which is actually quite a bit taller than I'm showing you here. And you'll have these cards here. This is called the market. Kind of like a discard pile, but not quite. Each person's gonna get a starting hand of 11 cards. You, many of these cards will have maybe some special abilities on them like lobbyist or spy, things like that. But most of them are gonna be numbers that match the five colors in the middle. Everyone's gonna get at least, you're gonna get one random one in your hand and then the rest of your cards will just be well, randomly drawn from the deck. Now, on a player's turn, you're gonna pick an action to do. One of those actions can be simply to play a card in front of you. So if you have a one, you can play a one. You can only have one pile for each color, but once you have the one down on a future turn, you can play a two and then a three and so on and so forth. You can play cards in the highest and each color is a six and there only is one of each six in the game. At the end of the game, each pile that you have is worth the points that it shows on it. So this would be worth three points at the end of the game. There's not a lot of points in the game, so this is one of the main things you can do. If you need more cards, you can discard a card to the top of any of these piles. When you discard it, you place it slightly askew like this. So you can see all the cards in that column. And then you get to draw two cards from the deck. So you're turning in one card for two. And so as time goes by, these are going to fill up. If they're ever empty for any reason, you will refill them immediately. When you play a card, I could play this card here, for example. And because it's a two, and this is a two, I can take all these and put them in my hand. Then we'll draw one card and place it like that. If I play a color, let's say I played a blue somewhere, I could then take all these into my hand. So you can get a whole pile of cards if you have the same color number or name as the top card of something else. Another thing you can do is if you have three cards of the same color in your hand. So let's say I have three reds, I can discard those three reds and I can take the bear. Not the bear, I'm sorry. I can take one of these quests. The bear is another way. I'll, I'll tell you how to get the bear in a second. But I take one of these quests. These are randomly put out here at the beginning of the game. You'll secretly look at it, and this says at the end of the game, if I have two or more of the orange cards in my hand, I'll get two victory points. Otherwise, it's one victory point. So taking one of these is worth a victory point, no matter what, but it could be worth two. And again, every victory point counts. Now the bear, I mentioned the bear. The bear is pretty easy to get. Any of these characters are easy to get, but you can only have one per game. But you can take one as a free action once you have at least a level three of that color. You'll then take that and put it in front of you. So like the bear says, you'll take two ambassadors. They're special cards that go in your hand. That lets you play a number card, skipping a number of a, the number order, which is pretty impressive. And at the end of the game, you'll double the bonus victory points from your relics, no matter if it's positive or negative. So each of these has something here, like the links. When you take the links, you get all the cards from one row in the market, and he's plus two tomes during scoring. So that's one thing you do, but remember you can only take one of these and once per game. You can also take these if you accomplish them over the course of the game. So if I have two fours face up in front of me, I'll take this. Each of these is gonna be worth one point at the end of the game. You can also play special cards like a spy, you can ask somebody if they have a very specific card in their hand. It's kind of like go fish. If they don't, you'll draw from the deck. Sometimes when you take a card, like the knight comes from the lion, so I can play him 
and I'll immediately draw cards from this equal to my highest number that's in front of me. The lobbyist lets you skip a number, so I can go from this three directly to a five if I have the five in my hand, but only if someone else has a higher thing from me, a higher number of blue than I do. And the advisor lets me take any two cards from out here. So you're doing all this, the game's gonna end when all these cards, the quest submissions are gone and have been taken, or when the deck runs out of cards. You're gonna get points for, as I said, the top number you have in front of you in each of your piles. You're also going to get points sometimes from your special abilities. These are worth one or two points. These are worth one point. There are cards called relics in the game, and you get one point if you have the highest number of that color. If you don't, you lose a point. And then there's a bunch of tomes in the deck. Now, tomes can be discarded. They match anything here, which makes them pretty handy. And they're kind of useless during the game, but at the end of the game, whoever has the most tomes gets three points, and second most gets one point. Remember, the Lynx has an extra two per scoring, so that's kind of useful in that regard. You'll add together all these points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. You know, folks, when you watch it overview, I don't know what your thoughts on the game might be, because you're going to sit there and go, oh, that's a lot of different things going on. But I, I really like this game. I'll tell you my rating right now is a 7.5. It's a, it's a fun, fast card game that has the uh, SQT factor, the snappy quick turns. I really like that. Um, it's, you are just doing one thing. Play a card in front of me. Discard a card. Draw two cards. Discard three cards, take one of these. I look at this. At the end of the game, if I have two twos in my hand, get two victory points. There's some interesting things here. Yes, the playing cards on top of each other is kind of a dilution or a, a progression of phase 10 and other card games that people like. But I, I don't know. It's you, you are picking one of the animals that you're going to take in front of you, and you might pick one that other people... Uh, you, you might, I might want the fox, for example. The fox says when you play a number card of a color that you have not played yet, you may draw a card. Well, that's pretty neat if you get them out early. And when you discard, the color of your cards count as any color. Wow, that's pretty awesome. I can discard a card in the middle and take rows all the time. So I want to get the fox, but I need to get the fox early, and I'm thinking about that and someone else takes the fox. Also, if I take the fox, I'm discarding three green cards to do so. There's more strategy to this game than, than meets the eye. Even if it has a card in it, that is essentially a go fish card. Even if you're playing the cards that are essentially like phase 10. But beyond all that, it works really well. I don't care about the theme. I don't care about, you know, oh, this, the, you know, this uh, inheritors. I mean, I do get a kick out of this bear here. I like that, that artwork of it. I think the art in the game is fine. I think the component quality of the cards and everything is good. It's a nice production, um, but I was just very amused by it. I think some people won't like it. I think the scoring is low. Um, every point in this game counts. And as the game ends, you're like, well, I guess I'll throw a one in front of me because that's a point. I guess I'll put a two on top of a one because that's another point. Yeah, and then you're also, do I keep these tomes, but they clog my hand up, and I also could discard them to take a whole bunch of other cards, but... There's just a lot of stuff going on. And then there's some variety because you can change out the five different, you know, leaders of the different clans. You know, so if I play with the, I just showed you the fox who discards things, I can play the monkey. Other players have to give you a card from their hand, then you give them a card back when you take the monkey. And whenever you draw one to two cards, you can draw an extra card. So he's all he's about drawing cards, just like the fox is. Ah, oh, I don't know. And the wolf says, well, after you play a number card without using a talent, you may play an extra number card immediately. That's pretty awesome. I can say two, three, five, six. That can save you actions. I don't know. I find those to be kind of the sealant here, which makes the game interesting and puts it all together. So there you go. A, a little card game. I was not really expecting anything. I had no thoughts on a positive or negative. And when I put it out, I said, wow, it's taking more table space. But the, the snappy quick turn factor... Um, the game comes with these nice little reference cards that tell you exactly what you can do on your turn and how the three different um, talent cards, they call them, work. The advisor, the spy, and the, the lobbyist. It's fast. Um, there's not a lot of thought that you need to put into each turn, but the gameplay is more strategic. So definitely one to check out. That's The Inheritors. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.